Hello and welcome, you and uh, all viewers. Today I got something a bit special. It's a Revue exclusive wide boy. And why I call it a wide boy is because it's the extra wide case. These usually come for in a format from 30 millimeters to 34, but this is a 35 and a half millimeter. So it's, you know, it's small uh, compared to modern watches. But back in the day when this came out, this was a really wide version of this watch. Um, they came out wider a bit later on with the caliber 81, um, or around the same time. But this is a caliber, I believe, it's a caliber 77. Let's open it up and have a look. Yep, there we go. That is the caliber 77. And... Um, it has an extra wide movement holder ring to keep it in place. You can see that here. And it's in a very solid stainless steel case. So there's a mark on the case, 137. I'm not sure if that's a reference of this case, um, but it might be. If not, you just have the Riveway Sport uh, serial. So even though this is called a Riveway ex exclusive, um, which is supposed to have a nicer finish on the dial, etc. It's uh, in a Riverway Sport case. Anyway, um, this movement has probably not had a service in the last 40 to 50 years, and it's time for us to um, revive this uh, beauty. While we're looking at it, just for your reference, you can see here, we still have the lead gasket um, pressed into the case. That's definitely an indication that this has not been serviced in the last 40 years. So um, yeah, we're gonna pop this out of the case and take the hands off. As you can probably see in the video here, the luminous compound in both the hour hand, especially the, well, especially the hour hand and in the minute hand has suffered but the compound on the dial is in uh, very good condition and shows no sign of flaking. So we're going to replace the compound in the hands because um, I'm not a big fan of um, partial missing loom like this, but we'll mix this up with a nice turn. It will uh, go well with the dial. So we're gonna start by removing the stem and getting the movement out of the case. Sitting in this room was very tight, but it came out. So stem out and um, see if it just falls out. Gently tap that. Yep. Wow, look at the dial. Absolutely gorgeous. Tiny bit of patina, but nothing. Uh, no scratches, no nothing. Oh, well, there's a couple of, couple of little marks underneath here, but overall, for being a 70-year-old dial, I'm very happy with that. Those hands were really tight on there. The reason I was quiet and took a long time was because it really, I was kind of exerting the force onto it. Um, but luckily, no marks to dial, that's come off nicely. Lovely. So with this sub-second dial, I really don't want to take it off with my tool or anything else like this, because the chances is I'm the chance is I'm going to scratch these sub sub markers. I find with the dial like this, the best thing is to actually lift the sub hand off with the dial itself. So we have to go to the dial screws on the side, loosen them up. I need a thinner screwdriver blade to go in there. 
Again, very tight. A lot of these screws are really tight on here. There we go. That wasn't so bad. So the sub second hand is really on there very loosely and just kind of pops off nicely. Whereas if you try to force something underneath it, um, chances are quite good you're going to leave a mark. So I'm just going to flip that off. Put this away safely. And now we can also remove the dial. Come on. Don't want to dial, bend any dial feet, etc. This, this one's being a bit. Screws it. Oh, there we go. Nice. Again, beautiful dial. We'll have a closer look at this later on. Uh, we've got to m match up the hands to the dial, and um, we'll do that once this is in the cleaning machine. And again, this is why I love Riveway. Look at the finish on that. We're going to have a closer look um, when we're putting it back together because then it will be nice and clean as well. But uh, this gives you an indication of what this looks like. So now I'm going to do this in time lapse and maybe put on some um, unappropriate music to do to accompany that. But um, yeah, there's no point uh, seeing me taking it apart and back together again because it's pretty much the same thing, just in reverse. So, uh, yeah. So, the case. What to do with the case? Um, well, we're going to remove that um, lead gasket. Which goes out like this. Probably not good having lead right next to your skin anyway, um, even though it is underneath the uh, case back, but yeah, never mind. Crystal out. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put that in the ultrasonic cleaner, clean this up, and uh, when we put it together, we'll have a new rubber gasket on that. With the hands, that stuff is definitely radioactive and I don't want to get any dust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop them both into some acetone here. Just simply whirl that around a bit. And um, I'm going to take that out in a little while and hopefully the luminous compound has just simply dissolved off the hands. Then we're going to apply some new compound and uh, match it up to the match it up to the dial compound. So my movements in the cleaning machine, uh, getting the full spa treatment. I um, kind of got this color to go by, which is yellow with a hint of orange and a little bit of age. Um, What's in here already wouldn't be too bad, but uh, that's dried and uh, I should clean the cup out, but it doesn't really matter in this case. Um, so we're going to take, take a little bit of yellow. Take quite a bit, because I'm going to do a set of other hands as well, which need somewhat the same color. Chunk of yellow, actually. That should be fine. Uh, I think a bit of orange. So maybe a ratio of four to one. Yellow to orange. So one part orange like that. We don't want it to be completely orange. Just gives it a little bit of tint. And. Um, I'm going to blend this together and then we're going to add a little bit of um, powder.
shoulder. Do we want that to get just a little bit darker? Bit of a binding engine there. Let's take a tiny bit more. Like so. this together. So the orange of course is very strong. Takes a bit over for the yellow. It's alright. Not done yet. We're going to dial that down a tiny bit. What we'll do, we'll add a bit of um, more yellow powder to it. Put a little bit more of binder on that, it's a bit thick. Drop on top, like so. Now this is kind of this is way too light compared to what I want it to be. I want it to have this that little bit more kind of age look to it. So, a little bit of umber powder Yeah, I'm just simply just going to, really don't want a lot, just want to cover a dot like that and then we're going to mix that in. Yeah, you can see that colour change. Mix that real good in there. dirty loom to it but as this fins out it's not going to be as dark as it is now so it's kind of a kind of trying to get I'm also calculating how it's going to look when it dries but I'm, we're pretty close so we're going to apply this to the hands now so it's quite big hands so we've got a bit of a job of filling them but uh, I'm going to just move that over like so I want that to catch on both sides let's put some more on there like this I need to work it up, but there we go. Perfect. Just a minute hand. Put it in from the back, of course. That looks nice and tidy from the front. Turn this around. And then we can put that on here. Nice, a bit more. Well, that all binds like so. I'll just let that dry out. I think that's going to be a nice match for this dial. Um, the color I got is a little bit too dark for the other dial I'm going to do, uh, but uh, so I'm going to mix up a new mi mix and I'll do these hands for another project, but that's uh, for another job.
here you can see I have fitted the um, capsules, so the shock protection system, the Inca shock, and the uh, balance is moving very nice and freely in all positions, which is good. Um, that means that that should uh, work as it should. I've also fitted the mainspring into the um, mainspring barrel, so we're all ready to put this movement back together. Very easy, see if we can get that into focus, about there, very nice. This movement is in very good condition, I have to say. Nice little prolage decoration that goes underneath the bridges here. Of course, they've stopped when it comes to under the bridges in general, but still very, very, very good surface on most of this. Um, straight edges, so it's not beveled, so, you know, I, I would say this is, um, what can we compare it to? I guess we can compare it to temporary Rolex movement, maybe, in terms of finish on the plates. Um, it's not a little nicer. It's definitely the same quality as a Turner. Definitely the same quality as a Mega. Um, it's very high. It's very good. It's, of course, a couple of scuffs and marks from age, uh, previous service and whatnot. But overall, very nice. So what we're going to start with is I'm going to fit this here, which is the um, setting lever screw. The reason I'm fitting that now is because when I fit the bridge on top of it, um, you can't fit this after the bridge is in place. What I'm going to do is put a tiny little bit of, oh, I can put a tiny little bit of grease on the side. That's a bit out of focus, but just on the side here and here. Just for future proofing, if any moisture comes in, very nice if there's a tiny bit of grease on that because then it won't rust onto the main plate um, and move easier. While I'm doing that, I'm... Um, yeah, I'll do that later. I'll fit the setting lever later on, but at least that's in place. I know that's fine. Next, we're going to fit the barrel. So a little bit of oil in the barrel of a hole. I'll do the same for the center wheel while we're at it. There we go. Just a little bit on the side. Let's see. So continue, put the barrel in. Put the center wheel in like so. Now that we have the um, We've fitted the uh, setting lever screw. I'm happy to now place the barrel bridge back over the barrel. Sorry about the light quality today. As always, it's winter here, so it's pretty dark and gloomy, but uh, the workshop lights, I hope is good enough for this. Would be nice if uh, anyone has suggestions for good lighting for this, please let me know. Let's pop the bridge back on there. Now the bridge, I'm not too worried. I'm happy to put the screws on without uh, going under a microscope because I'm not going to break any pivots, am I? Nice polished screws, very high quality on those. The Riverwear uh, Suma Probably my top two underestimated brands. Maybe after, actually the most underestimated brand is Roma, I would say. And then it's Riveway. Riveway, Roma, pretty much second, first place of underrated brand. Then you have Suma. They, uh, their movements are just absolutely fantastic as well. And they go for, you can pick up such good bargains of those. Um, after that, what would be after that? Maybe, oh, I gotta put this, uh, gotta put this third wheel in. Fourth wheel, actually, sorry, I'm mixing up the terminology. Fourth wheel, third wheel. And get that down straight. And 
second wheel. There we go. See that? If you think something's missing, you'd be correct. And that would be the escape wheel. Again, see if we can get a detail here. Beautiful execution on that. Let's look at the high polish on that escape wheel really nice condition i'm going to do a movement review on this on the website mitka.co.uk so we'll see what the point score comes up to you do have a date version of this and a overlying central second on the 77 i believe so there are a diff few different variations but this is your basic basic sub second layout um, I say of non-in-house movement brands, I would say Weiler is pretty under underestimated. They do really good quality cases, and uh, the decoration of their ETA movements are second to none. Really good. We'll do a Weiler soon as well. Um, I've done one previously, but we'll do another one as well. Anyway, there's a gear train layout, nice on the bridge here. I'm going to do this under the microscope because I do not want to risk breaking any pivots. got the uh, gear train lined up and uh, the bridge is in place now we just have to secure it with the bridge screws Very nice. Now we're going to fit the crown wheel on top here. And again, see if we can get that in focus. Look at the finish of that. That is nicer than Rolex. I'm sorry. As a, if you go in contemporary movements, if you look at a Rolex 700 movement, this is nicer finish. No doubt about it. On the uh, High, high gloss polished, pretty much perfect polish and uh, bevel, very, very nice. What Rolex does have, this doesn't have, the Rolex has a little steel plate underneath there, so I guess they add up in terms of quality like that. I would have liked a little disc on the other underside here to protect it, but it doesn't. But the finish on the, on the uh, crown wheel here is spectacular. And same goes for the ratchet wheel we're going to fit in just a second. Next we're going to pop a droplet of oil on the sliding surface. And again, look at this. The polished quality on the covering disc. This one's in really good condition as well. No scratches, no nothing. It's like a mirror.
catch the thread and not tightening it. I'm just going to move it into position so I can fit the second screw as well. Like so. If I tighten one screw and it's in the wrong position, you will have to untighten it again. So it's just a good way of doing it. Gorgeous, very, very nice. So nice when those screw heads are in this good condition. And also when, uh, yeah, everything. I, I, uh, such a pleasure to work on a watch which isn't completely buggered up. No, that's not directed to any of my uh, clients. Just, uh, just worth mentioning, that's all. Again, this ratchet wheel, piece of art, absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna have a close up on that in a second. moving gear train just look at the finish on that that is beautiful you oh, see you can even see my reflection in it uh, you don't want to see my ugly mug anyway look at that it's the closest you get to movement um, pornography as you get that is just so nice and all in a brand you've probably never heard about this is the GT movement Caliber 77, very nice. I don't know if this is a GT, so I'm not an expert. I need to uh, have a, there's a little write-up uh, Scott did on Revway Watches on the website, so you can check that out. Anyway, um, back to the ground, back to reality. What I'm gonna do now, I'm going to oil the top pivots and the lower pivots, and I'm going to fit the setting and winding mechanism then we're going to fit the pallet fork um, or the pallet bridge and uh, wind, oil that, wind it up and see how she goes. So what you want here is just a tiny bit of oil like that in the cup. Um, you want that little cup halfway filled, not all the way up, not completely empty, just in the middle. And that'd be just right. Well, as you probably can tell, the movement is now facing dial up. And we're just going to put a droplet of oil on the center wheel, where we're going to press the clutch pinion, cannon pinion, in place. Uh, I have to point out, as uh, I'm impressed, as all nice pelage decoration on this. There's a smooth decoration on the outside and a fine surface on the beveled edge. It actually has two slopes of beveling. Again, very, very nice. Now going to fit the setting lever, which goes on this screw here. And that's the screw head is on the other side. I'm going to gently hold this in place with my finger, flip the movement around, and hopefully catch the thread gently, like this, like so. I feel that's going in. Loosen it a little bit again, and then we can fit this stem back onto the movement holder, get the stem out, stem, get that ready, we're going to fit the sliding pinion in position, I'm going to put a little bit of grease in the groove that engages with the yoke later on, it's there, come on, and we're going to find the winding pinion, which I'm also going to put a little bit of grease on the engaging teeth here, engaged with the sliding pinion, 
and we're just going to gently drop that in, like so. Now we're going to put a little bit of grease on the stem sliding surfaces themselves. So your actual winding pinion will always free spin here, while your sliding pinion will always engage. So that's why this is square, that engages with a square inside of the sliding pinion, and this has got a round hole. So when we put this in, like so, Loose enough, should. Oh, I've got to loosen that a little bit more. In. I've also tightened the uh, setting lever screw. So what happens is that when you turn the when you turn the stem around, it turns the sliding pinion around, and that will either engage with the uh, setting mechanism, or it will uh, engage with your with your uh, um, winding pinion and wind. And for those two positions to engage properly, we're going to fit the yoke lever, yoke lever spring, setting intermediate setting gear, and um, and uh, our setting lever spring. We can start with the yoke lever here and the rule of thumb is anywhere there's kind of a touching sliding surface you put a little bit of grease and it helps it So this uh, yoke spring should just fall nicely in here. And it just is quite tensioned, so I just gotta I'm gonna use two tweezers on that to get that in right. Um, gonna keep your brain a little bit switched on when you fit these because if they ping up away, they can travel quite far and um, simply vanish into the stratosphere never to be seen again. There you go, that's in place. Now a little bit of oil for the minute wheel post and the intermediate winding pinion post. So you see this little winding pinion, I don't know if we can get it in focus, but it's beveled. The beveled edge, not always, but if it has a beveled edge, the beveled edge will engage with your sliding pinion. That comes in here. So minute wheel, intermediate minute wheel, there. In this case, the setting lever also acts as a bridge for the intermediate winding mechanism. To help this movement always be in the correct either winding or setting mechanism and nowhere in between, we have this setting lever spring. So the yoke spring, if I was going to be picky, could of course have been a machine spring that would have just lifted this quality of the movement one step higher. Well, quality is maybe the wrong word, but the finesse, I would say. But then again, you don't you don't find that on the early Rolexes or Amigas either, so I'm not going to detract too much. It's just such a bonus when you have the machine springs. You do find that on Suma, a lot of them. 
and uh, also quite common on, uh, the, well, at least the Series uh, 1268 long jeans, which is tempered to this. But then again, not all the 1268s have as nice finish as this one. Well, we can wind, that's good. And we can set. There's no pallet in there, so you can see that's uh, the friction on the um, cannon pinion, and it's going to be good enough, very good. As I said earlier, now it's time to fit the pallet falcon bridge. Okay, you get the idea here. Okay, that is definitely engaged. Just making sure you see how quickly that can jump out. Moment of truth is here. Let's see if it will tick again. Very dramatic. You can get a little bit stir crazy being in the workshop alone all day. Anyway, there we go. Didn't even want to fight me all into place pretty hard it's quite tight fit on these bridges but uh, to go on nice Let's secure that bridge put it on the time graph and see what it does well nothing wrong with the amplitude that's great our beat error can do with adjusting it's running pretty fast but of course, running fast, uh, I do believe it's already set to very fast on the balance clock, so we're going to give that a little bit of an adjustment as we stand here. Let's put it about the, that's close to the middle, okay, it's still a little bit slower. There we go, that's not far off the middle, that's actually pretty much spot on, that's what I want. Beta error is way too large, so I'm going to adjust that. Unfortunately, I have to adjust that on the on the um, collet of the hairspring because it's not adjustable by the bridge. And we also have banking. That means there's too much power in the main spring, or I've simply cleaned it too well. So I'm going to look into these issues, and uh, we'll see where we can get. So, beat error finally hit to uh, 0 0.2, which is uh, very much good enough in my book. The um, rate uh, is pretty good. It do have a little bit of positional variation, but uh, dial down, dial up is pretty much the same. I've set this to run, um, I've set this to run a few, few seconds fast. Um, side position, not the best, but you know what, this is gonna keep within uh, 15, 20, 20 seconds a day, and that's good enough. Time for dial and hands. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that the dial screws are available. Just loosen up. The other one's missing, so I'm gonna find that in the basket. Okay, I found a screw for the dial, put that in. Now he's going to put a little droplet of oil in between the, the um, clutch pinion, cannon pinion, and the hour wheel. 
I'll pop a little movement, oh, well, that movement to dial washer there. Make sure that uh, our wheel doesn't jump. Now well, we can uh, pop on the dial. And securing the dial screws. I'm going to start by fitting the sub second screw. This was a bit corroded, so I've cleaned it up, got the rust off. Looks very nice now. I did see another gentleman use plastic tip tweezers for this job, and uh, I'm going to look into that and order a set of those. They're pretty clever to have plastic close to your dial compared to uh, brass, I uh, haven't had any particular accidents with it, but just in case, not a bad idea. Anyway, so you can see the sub second on there, we've got to press that down gently. Really don't want that too close to the dial, but you can't have it riding up too high neither. I'm going to fine adjust that under the microscope, and I'll be back in a second. I'm very happy with the uh, sub second dial, how that is on there. Now, for the hands themselves, we did relume them. As you saw earlier in the video and here's the result pretty darn good I think a little bit lighter than the dial itself that's okay they did, um, usually they are mismatched uh, so, uh, but I, I think this looks pretty authentic in terms of age as we know it's not I'm posting a video on YouTube showing it's not so I'm not going to claim its original compound on the dials here that'd be very hard to do but compared to what it was before, I would say it looks so, so, so much better. Pretty tight fit on these hands. I'm gonna be a little bit, um, roach them up, but I'd rather not do that. Right, there they are, I'm pretty well where they are. So plenty of clearance now to the for the sub dial, which is good. I want this to line up nicely with the minute hand, which of course this is kind of a gauge set. It looks pretty straight. Loosely fit the minute hand and we'll go over to 12 o'clock, see how it lines up. A little bit off. It's just loose on there now, so it should kind of just slide on the top of the axle like so. That's nice. It's very close now. Turn a bit more. There we go. Almost, almost, so close, so close. Sorry, I'm going a bit loopy here. There we go, 12 o'clock, very nice. See how it looks up to 6 o'clock. And that looks pretty good on 6 o'clock. A little bit of differential on the marking when this is made. Not 100%, but pretty darn good. Anyway, let's go up to 12 again, see if where we want to be. Good. I'm going to look at that under the microscope, see how good I can get. It's good. So, secure that in place. Make sure it clears the hour hand. It does easily. I don't know why you can see that, but it's got good clearance to the sub second and the hour hand. Yet yeah, nice and straight. So, good stuff. 
Now it's a matter of casing the movement. I'm going to be fully honest, I'm not the biggest fan of this case ring. I think it's a bit of a, it's not the greatest feature on this watch, but uh, I am sure it will do the job. Look at this, this is for another watch, uh, also a Rover 77. That was from a gold watch, which was slaughtered. We're going to look at it in a second. Um, yeah, they're not all like this. It just happens to be this wild boy. I think they have put this special movement in the ring in just to yeah, make it a bit bigger. Wouldn't surprise me if um, this case could be used for a caliper 81 as well. I'm not sure. But, um, I'm not going to complain. It's a nice wide case and it's going to look great. And the movement, of course. I've already give a pretty good impression of what I think of it. It's um, brilliant. Very, very nice movement, nice decoration. Uh, I could do with a couple of more jewels as always. This is a fairly low jewel variant of this, 15 jewels. You do have uh, later ones with uh, 17 jewels, even up to 18 jewels, uh, depending on the variant. So you get the jewels in the center for the center wheel. Etc. This isn't this is an early watch. This is a probably late 1940s is my bet. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the decoration on the movements beautifully executed. The uh, details are nice. Um, overall, a very very nice movement. I'm going to do a movement review on this, so you can see on my website mitka.co.uk, and in association with that, I'm going to show you a couple of watches. Um, here is a later version, so this is a 60s watch, this movement did go on up into the 1960s, and uh, here you got full 17 jewels, so you have those two jewels I said was missing on the other ones. Again, you got all the nice finishing as the earlier model, they also have the GT logo I was missing on the early one, um, something to do with the... Um, I can't remember what it is, I'll see if I find it. But this one is uh, quite unusual because it's with date. That's a very uh, pretty unusual date construction. Uh, you see it's all completely different from uh, the non-date version. A uh, bit sloggy, not really sprighty as such. Um, it's what I like, for example, on the on the Rolex, that's what they really got right early, was a snappy date change. Same with a lot of the Japanese brands and some of the other, like AS has some very snappy ones. Saturna got a snappy one after a while, like, yeah, it did well, but then again, it's all right. You can compare this to uh, certain Amiga models in terms of date snappiness, no quick set or anything like that. Um, I do believe you can, the only the nice thing with this there's no quick set, you can, no, you can, yeah, you well, you sort of do that trick to move it forward, but you can't go back and forth on it. But yeah, that's your date. Um, while we're talking about variations, here you got your central seconds version. These are all manky, um, unfortunately it's got a scratch, it's been robbed from a gold case. But you'll have a pinion, that's also been robbed for parts, and that goes through here, overlying wheel. Kind of a standard construction design. Looks quite nice spring that goes from underneath here and over there. Very nice construction on that. Um, nice beveled edges on the bridges. Yeah, no, it's um, not a bad attempt at a sweep second. Um, I would rate that just as much as uh, similar on an Amiga, Amiga movement or a Rolex from that time period. Um, 
no, the superior sweep second early watches must be a turn and the ETAs. Um, that's a different story. So there you have it. That's the different variations of the Railway 77. There might be some more. I'm not sure, but that's the ones I know about. I'm going to put the case back on this, find a nice strap and uh, yeah, we'll have some shots from the front as well. enough, we have a little bit of sunshine. Um, gives me a chance to show off this watch. Uh, out in the real world. What a magnificent dial. Hard to catch her. Ooh, this is, uh, feels exclusive, I'll say that. Just the design of those hands, really, really nice. We're gonna keep it. If nobody buys it, yes. But I will have this watch available on my website, mitka.co.uk for what I would say a bargain price for the quality. I'm also going to do a movement review on these movements, uh, very interesting movements. Yeah, hope you enjoy this video and until next time, have a good one. Thank you.